MSNBC's Martin Bashir kicked off an avalanche of criticism when he described a slave owner who punished slaves by making them defecate in a transgressor's mouth. Then he made a suggestion about how to respond to Sarah Palin, who critics said had trivialized slavery by comparing it to the U.S. debt. When Mrs. Palin invokes slavery, she doesn't just prove her rank ignorance, she confirms that if anyone truly qualified for a dose of discipline from Thomas Thistlewood, then she would be the outstanding candidate. A wide range of critics condemned the remark, including one of Bashir's co-workers, morning show host Joe Scarborough. It was a deplorable thing to say, uh, and he has every reason to be ashamed for saying it. But while Bashir has apologized, critics aren't ready to drop the discussion. So is an apology enough? And at what point do we need to move on? Joining me to discuss in New York, Amy Holmes, anchor of the Hot List on GlennBexTheBlaze.com. And here in Washington, Eric Wimple, a media critic at the Washington Post. So, Amy, I'd like to start with, with you. Martin Bashir apologized for his comments. He's reached out to the Palin family. Is there really a problem here, or are competitors and partisan people trying to make an issue out of something that has already passed? Well, obviously, MSNBC and Mr. Bashir believes that there is a problem there. I mean, like most Americans, I don't watch his show. It's a low-rated show. But his remarks, as Joe Scarbo said, they were deplorable. And not only that, they were planned. There was malice of forethought. And bizarrely, for a TV host who is constantly attacking the president's critics as racist, he cast himself in the role of a vicious slave owner who wanted to mete out this dehumanizing uh, punishment on this public figure. What MSNBC decides to do, that's completely up to them. But let's reflect, reflect back that in 2008, David Schuster, he was guest hosting for MSNBC, and he made a remark that was offhand and distasteful about Hillary Clinton and her daughter Chelsea Clinton, and he was put on indeterminate uh, suspension and eventually, after acrimony, left the network. Now, I'd like to push back just a little bit and note that your boss, Glenn Beck, uh, accused President Obama of being a racist later reconsidered his words, apologized, people moved on. Uh, shouldn't Martin Bashir get the same sort of consideration? Uh, I don't think that the remarks compare. I can't speak for Glenn Beck. Uh, you know, you can make your decision about how, what you think about the president's racial outlook. But what Martin Bashir was doing was actually casting himself in the role of an 18th century slave owner who was suggesting that Sarah Palin be treated to what I think we all agree is vicious, vulgar punishment. Now, Eric, uh, you had said that his apology should be enough, and you even went to a book signing by Chris Matthews and asked him to comment on it. Uh, he wouldn't talk about it. Uh, but if, if that apology isn't coupled with some kind of punishment or suspension, is it really enough? Well, my point is that uh, we, in the media, we apologize a lot because we screw up a lot. So this, <laughs> this, this, this dance of screwing up big time and then apologizing is something we've seen a lot. I thought Bashir, whoever wrote it, I mean, there was this little controversy about whether Martin Bashir wrote his own apology, mm -hmm. but whoever wrote it, he seemed quite sincere, quite contrite, and I do believe that a good media apology needs to be celebrated at some level. It, it appears that he's genuinely regretful about what he had said and that he will learn and move on from this. 